Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be my annual Who Will See the Most Snow This Year 2018-2019 this time around. Last time I made this video it was 2017-2018 and that video was fairly popular. So um, I decided to make this video again. Again, I will be trying to answer this question. By no means is this forecast 100% accurate. Uh, that's just not going to happen. Uh, it's, it's a forecast because we're predicting, we're kind of guessing, an educated guess. So, if you like these type of videos, if you like my channel, if you're an old returning viewer but you haven't subscribed yet, um, consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, you're going to help my channel grow and it's free for you guys. And it really helps me out. If you're a new viewer, this is your first video ever watching, you know, check out my channel, watch this whole video, and then consider liking or subscribing to my channel. Helps out a lot. So, these are the, will be the four things we'll be looking at. However, um, as I was doing this, uh, this um, this chart right here, uh, I put in NOAA's seasonal outlook, but we won't be looking at that because, again, NOAA's seasonal outlook isn't the most accurate in the first place, and it would just be too long of a video. So we have these three main ones, and these two will be taking up, nine, not 90, but 85% of the video. So we'll be looking at the ENCO outlook analogs and other forecasts, and I'll explain what that means all once we get there. So first off, we start off at the EN, oh, sorry, ENSO outlook, the ENSO outlook. And Enzo Neutral is favored through August through October 2018, with an El Nino favored thereafter, so we don't get much snow through August through October, August through October, so I won't be really including that in this video, I'll be just including, assuming that an El Nino will be developing, um, you know, after October, and during the Northern Hemisphere winter, it has 65 to 70 percent chance of it remaining and developing, or developing and remaining there. So you can see, through the whole months of winter, it's going to be an El Nino, or that's the most probable one at this point. And again, is this going to be 100 uh, percent accurate? Even with this thing being, you know, 100 percent accurate, we don't know. But at this point, the chances of a neutral happening, which is in this gray, are getting smaller and smaller, and even the chances of a Modoka El Nino are getting smaller and smaller. But if you're wondering what an El Nino is in the first place, what does that even mean? Well, it means something like this. An El Nino typical pattern is warm across the north, dry across the Midwest. Um, not necessarily the East Coast, because they could see some big storms riding up this jet stream right here. Sometimes this subtropical jet isn't just confined to the south. It could go up right here and meet with this polar jet and produce some big storms with an El Nino. However, this is what a typical pattern looks like. However, if we look back at the models, again, this is going back to that same thing or similar thing. The majority of the models predict El Nino to develop during September and November. So we have that. However, looking at these models, these three main averages, this is the statistical average, this is the DYN average, and this is the CPC or Climate, Climate Prediction Center console. And all these... Um, looking at all these, this blue, green, and red, all of them are below 1 at 90% of the time. So that 1 is that 1 degree above average of the sea surface temperatures off the coast of Peru, which is where El Nino is measured, or El Nino or the Enzo is measured. And with it being 1 degree only, not being much more than warmer than that, it's called a weak, or I would even call it a very weak, to impossibly moderate El Nino this year. Um, I would definitely not think a strong El Nino would happen, but you can see a weak to moderate El Nino, the impacts are completely different than they are with a regular El Nino. So a weak, sorry about that, weak to moderate El Nino, you could see cold shots going into the United States, so the jet stream does dip down further south. And like I was talking about, these merging jet streams, um, the subtropical one and the polar jet one, could produce some big time snowstorms across the east. And even if there's enough cold air in place, it could be across the mid-Atlantic and even parts of the southeast like North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee and northern Georgia. However, it is fairly still, uh, con you know, it's still, still fairly constant that the west will be mild and not necessarily seeing the best winter they would be in terms of snowfall and cold weather. And then wet across the Carolina, co uh, California's coast, southern coast. And the next thing I would like to look at is the potential for a Modokai El Nino. So remember how they were showing a, a 65 to 70% chance of an El Nino? Well, this is still considered an El Nino 
except it's an Alinho Madokai and its impacts are, again, a little bit different. At this point, I would say that this is what's most likely going to happen. Um, cold shots across the north and a weak to moderate El Nino is just going to occur. That's I'm fairly confident in that, but just in case the Madoki in, um, you know, happens, I kind of want to calculate that into my final forecast. So you can see during the anomalous sea surface temperatures, which stands for SST, during El Nino, our eastern base in the whole Pacific Ocean, if you look at the whole Pacific Ocean extending from East Asia into South America, you can see that the warm waters are central, uh, eastern based. So that's why it's called an eastern based El Nino. Now, during an El Nino Modokai, um, we see that the warm waters are centrally based, central based, so that's why it's called a central based El Nino. That's another name for an El Nino Madokai. And we have some cooler waters right off the coast of Peru and some cooler waters right off the coast of East Asia. And you may be wondering, well, why are you assuming that an El Nino Madokai may be forming this year? Well, Looking at our current sea surface temperatures, which we I pulled an image from today, they're fresh. You can see that we are starting to get a little bit of the El Nino warming right here. However, looking at some of the models uh, <clears throat> with the El Nino regions, this this whole thing is divided into Nino regions. We could uh, some of the models were actually predicting that the Nino one and Nino two region right in here off the coast of South America are cooling off, and they actually are cooling off. So that's why I am. I'm kind of, I'm not too sure that an El Nino Madokai will not form. There are still some chances, especially if this um, this cool water water section forms right off the coast of Peru, which some models are indicating sh uh, forming right now. So that's a little bit concernful, and you could see uh, East Asia a little bit cooler than average, mixed in with some yellow. So again, is this we, if we're gonna assume an El Nino is going to happen from this, we might as well assume an El Nino Modoki will happen, because to be honest, we have no idea where this is going to go. Either it's gonna go like this, or like this. Um, I doubt it's gonna happen something so strong like this. I mean, you can see this is 1.52 degrees above average. We'll be probably seeing one degree and under, hence the weak to moderate El Nino, my confidence in that forming. So, with an El Nino Modoki, or Modoki, uh, the there like I said there are some differences. So U.S. rainfall anomalies during an El Nino Madoka, you could see are it's wetter than normal across the southeast, east, and midwest. During an El Nino, it's drier across those areas and more wet in the west and central part of the country. But the Madoka is still very similar to that weak to uh, moderate to weak weak to moderate El Nino pattern. So whether these two forms, they will have fairly similar outcomes in terms of impacts on the United States. So now I want to look at some analogs. So this is November to March 2015, 2007, and a couple of years that are that are all weak to moderate El Nino years. And you can see that um, across much of the country, it is just around average temperatures. Not, nothing, um, nothing too significant in terms of above average, nothing too significant in being below average, just around average, with some locations being above, uh, below average and quite a big chunk of the the West being above average. Now let's look at the um, the El Nino and notice how I have 2015 in here even though this should not be in here. I did it without the 2015 and the impacts are still very similar. So um, this is an El Nino, just a typical El Nino, not a weak to moderate one. This is a strong or uh, even a stronger El Nino, very strong El Nino. So you can see the impacts are warm across the north and average around the south with some spots being cooler. Um, so again, that you can see those differences, and this is basically raw model data, not model, this is raw data that we had um, already had in the past years, and I just compiled them together. It's a great website. I'll post a link to it down below if you want to make your own little maps on this website. And um, looking at some uh, looking at the El Nino Modoka, you can see this is only one year, November to March 29, 2010, which was a well-known Modoka year. You can see that it is drastically cooler in the southeast and east, and parts, very extreme parts of the northeast and northern parts of the United States could be above average, but the rest of the United States is somewhere in between being right around average. And again, the impacts of an Modokai are similar to that weak and strong El Nino, meaning that the East Coast and the eastern part of the United States will be trending below average in either one, or at least average, not really above average. So now the last factor I'd like to look at is the um, winter uh, highlights by AccuWeather and the winter prediction by farm, the Farmer's Almanac. So looking at this, um, winter 18, 2019, you can see that they have cold shots across much of the Midwest and Plains, which I do agree with because with that, um, with that weak to moderate El Nino pattern, 
some of the, that jet stream can dip down into the parts of the United States where it could allow some of that colder air to come in. And then they have cold and mild periods across the northeastern, northern part of the United States, wintry mix across these areas, and wet and chilly strong tea storms down to the south. And I do agree with this wet and chilly and wintry mix up to the north because there will be a very active pattern, I think, for the east coast this year with big storms and even for the south, southeastern parts of the United States. So... Um, that is going to be, excuse me, that is going to be very interesting to watch. Across the west, you could see mild, dry, near normal, near normal, some snow in the, um, in the, in the eastern Rockies, where this, where this cold air could overlap with that, and in mid-season rain and snow, according to AccuWeather with that, but that is very precise and very hard to predict. I mean, they're saying mid-season rain and snow, so that would be around January, February, December, um, rain and snow, which at this point, I, I'm sorry, I can't tell you, I don't know, it may or may not happen. Um, now, let's look at the farmer's almanac, you can see they have, their overall thing is teeth chattering cold ahead, but I don't really like their um, outlooks that much, because it seems like they have the same thing for much regions every single year but what they have is teeth chattering cold plentiful snow for the plains midwest biting cold and snowy northeast cold and white and you can see everywhere else it's just similar to what the Naki weather did but a little bit on the cold bias side but i still like to look at them now let's look at my final forecast drum roll please and this is what I think it will look like. So I do think that uh, the southeast will have much below average temps and above average snow. Again, again, um, if you don't see snow typically in winter like southern Florida, then you probably won't see snow this winter. Um, we're not experiencing insanely below average temperatures this winter, just, you know, below average compared to the rest of the United States. Uh, but if you live, say, in Tennessee, central Georgia, northern Georgia, you still sometimes see snow. I do think that this year you'll have above average. So if you typically see two or three inches, this year you may see six or seven. Um, if you live in um, Kentucky and your average snowfall is around 15, this year you may up to see up to 20 and 30. That's the thing, and I think much below average temperatures are a very good bet. Now in the purple, extending across the Great Lakes and the south and the northeast into parts of the southeast, I do think it will be below average temps, not as nearly below average as this area in the pink, and slightly above average snow, especially across this northeast area. Um, I didn't want to make it a separate region because their temperatures will be very similar, but especially across this northeast area, I think you'll have um, quite a big dose of above average snow this year due to the fact that the northeasters will be or no, I think so. Northeasters will be fairly prevalent this year, and then in this blue, slightly below average temperatures and around average snow, depending on where you live. Probably the eastern side of this map will be the more above average snow, and in here will be towards the end, lower end of the average snow amount. And then we look at this uh, this shaded sandy color. We see average snow and cold. I think I agree fairly well with the AccuWeather forecast. If you if you saw them near normal for that part of the country, uh, though early on these parts of the woods, if you live in uh, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, you may see some cold weather, especially in the upcoming weeks. So it's, be prepared for that. And then across the north northwest, I do think above average temps and below average snow. Nothing too special in terms of weather conditions. However, again, this may not be set in stone. This is just assuming that a typical El Nino week to moderate El Nino will be happening and there could be so many other things going into this forecast that it's insane and I wouldn't be able to forecalculate all of that. So this is what I think will happen. Again, is this 100% right? Probably not, but um, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to my channel. Consider liking the video. Hope you learned something new. Hope you got some more insight and I'll catch you all guys in the next episode.